Welcome to the Killer Boobies Podcast, unraveling breast implant illness. Here's your hosts, Wendy Bunnell, Leslie Smoot, and Brandy Vega. Welcome to the Killer Boobies Podcast, episode number one. Woohoo! <laughs> Here I am with my girls. We've got three hosts of this podcast. My name is Wendy Bunnell. I have Leslie Smoot in the studio. I have Brandy Vega in the studio. And we are here as real women with real stories, real lives about surviving breast implant illness. And we're going to unravel that story. We're unraveling what this is all about, demystifying it, trying to shed light on it, that this is real. This is absolutely real. And we're finding that women that are discovering that they have breast implant illness, once they are removing their breast implants, which is called explant, so you're going to be hearing that, right? Mm -hmm. That once they get that out, they're finding that they're renewing their health, that they're reclaiming their health, yeah, right? right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. These and are so, women that were sick and getting sicker that are now getting healthier every single day. And mm-hmm. it's like being brand new all over again. It's almost like reverse aging. In fact, I feel like I have a second chance again. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I've lived this, you've lived this. Mm-hmm. Now, interesting enough. <laughs> I'm living it. <laughs> Randy's living it right we now. Can explain what you're talking about. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I actually am in the middle of all this. So I saw Wendy's story on Facebook. I saw she's been a friend of mine. We've worked together mm-hmm. over the last couple of years. I've looked up to her. And when she posted this, I was kind of floored. And all I saw was this thing that said killer boobies. I'm like, what is that all about? Like, what? <laughs> and so I read her post and it was talking about this thing I'd never heard of, breast implant illness. I was like, I have implants. You know, mm-hmm. I've never heard of this. And as I started researching, she sent me the link to this group. I got involved in the group. And now I want to get these removed. And you made a shirt that said, these are real because the fake ones tried to kill me. Exactly. And, and I have to just preface why I, I did that post to begin with, because I had finally had the download. Now you're going to hear my whole story eventually. Okay. So don't worry about it. I'll fill in the details, but in basically an in an upcoming <laughs> podcast, right? But suffice it to say that over the course of a year and a half of getting sicker and sicker and sicker to the point where I was literally planning my funeral last August that I got the download. I figured it out. I put the pieces of the puzzle together. Mm -hmm. And when I went on the Facebook page, the group, which please go to this, if you want more information, if this is really resonating with you, as you start hearing our stories and, and listening to the symptoms, you want to go to Healing Breast Implant Illness by Nicole on Facebook and also HealingBreastImplantIllness.com. Those are your best resources right there. There's a few people, like, oh, 100,000 plus women on there who are dealing, who are interested in this very topic. But yet, you know, my background is in reporting and news journalism. I've been doing this a long time. I consider myself pretty savvy when it comes to Mm -hmm. information and knowledge. I had no clue about this until October. Yeah. Yeah. 2019. Like I literally just learned about it. And now I I can't get these implants out fast enough. Exactly. And that's exactly what happened. So in September, I finally got to a place where I started to put the pieces together. Mm -hmm. And when I finally did, and I was looking at this Facebook page, I saw people I knew on there talking about it, talking about explants. And I thought, why aren't why is anybody talking about this? Face to face. If I would have known your friends. Yes. People aren't talking about it out loud. They're doing it in private discussion groups, exactly. but not out loud. And we want to get noisy. Right. <laughs> I wanted to go on the rooftops and yeah. say, I am going to be this vocal public awareness campaign. And that's what we're doing right now. We are. But I remember in your post that you said you were kind of embarrassed to admit that you had implants. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I know that I've been kind of embarrassed because everything that I talk about is, is, is about being authentic and being real. Mm -hmm. And ever since I got these 10 years ago, I felt like a part of me was disingenuous Mm -hmm. because it's like, I'm talking about being your real self and being authentic Mm -hmm. yet. I have a part of me that's fake. And there's this sort of stigma because at one point in time, we felt like someplace we weren't enough. Right. And, and for my kids, I have a teenager who's, you know, going to be turning 18 and and a two-year-old and you want to honor the body you're in, Mm -hmm. but it's a little bit, embarrassing, uh, slightly ashamed to say, I didn't love my body enough. I was peer pressured or I was tempted into changing it. Mm -hmm. And so there's like some embarrassment that comes along with it. 
Right. Yes, and I think there's also this whole aspect of it's part of the normal culture. So for some of us, there may not have been an embarrassment, but us just I was just going along with what everyone else was doing, and everyone went a size bigger, and it was no big deal, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, but it did become a big deal when my health was compromised. It came a big deal when my ability to function in the family was compromised. It came a big deal, like I said, when I was sick and getting sicker. Right. And I wondered if I was ever going to experience health ever again, yeah. then it did become a big deal. And then I started to go, why did I do something on a whim? Mm -hmm. Why did I do something that was so cavalier in my decision-making uh, just to make my uh, self fill out my swimsuit a little bit better? Why did I do that? And um, I had to really think about that because by the time I went to get my explant, I was so sick that the explant surgery was really hard on me. And you're gonna hear about it and you're gonna hear about how to recover from explant surgery. And we're going to walk you through these steps because these are important things that you need to know. Right. But it's interesting how we all get here from a different angle, maybe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yet here we are. We're exactly. All going to sit here together in a circle and talk about exactly. it. Exactly. But the one thing too is, if I had known, if my doctor had said something, if my friend had said something, if somebody mm -hmm. would have told me, "Here's what you could go through. Here's some yeah. of the things you could experience," mm -hmm. I would not have got it done. Right. I liked mm -hmm. myself enough, and it wasn't a big enough deal. But um, the doctor offered to do a trade with me because I do video production and I was on TV and I hosted his infomercial and mm -hmm. he said, hey, how about you do videos and I'll give you boobs. And I was like, oh, good deal. Like, why, you know, why not? But if he mm -hmm. would have told me, oh, your eyes can burn, your hair can fall out, you'll have a hard time breathing, you might have issues with your lungs, you might have insomnia, fibromyalgia, all these other symptoms that mm -hmm. maybe some of you are experiencing or maybe you're not. I would have not touched it with right. a 10 foot pole. And right, I, right. and I just hope that somehow what we are going mm -hmm. through or what we've been through, mm -hmm. like you might hear it if you're thinking about doing it. You know, right. it's interesting what we do here and what I did here and what I, and what I found myself saying after I got the implants was, yeah, I look good. I feel good. Yes, look I love at these. Them. Yeah, everybody <laughs> loves them. My husband loves them. This is the best thing ever. Yeah. You know, you feel like you're doing yourself this big favor. And I thought I was like, I, I really thought I was, and I, I was happy with it for a long time until I realized that the root cause of all my health problems were actually from the implants. It's funny because it's actually not funny, but um, being in a world of health and wellness, I mm -hmm. was trying to eat better, but I couldn't eat myself healthy. Mm -hmm. I was trying to be fit and exercise. I couldn't exercise myself healthy. And I was also into, well, what, what supplements and herbs can I take to make my body healthy and strong? I couldn't supplement myself no, healthy. No, you couldn't. I couldn't get there. You couldn't. And I couldn't even I couldn't even move the needle off of the sick bed right. because I wasn't getting rid of the root problem. And once I found out that the mm -hmm. implants were the root problem, it was profound. Yeah. And then getting the surgery done and experiencing the healing after the fact was remarkable. And we yeah. want to take you on that journey. Exactly. We want you to learn from what we've learned. Exactly. In fact, so when I got that information from the Facebook group and I was looking at my own personal friends that were part of this 107,000 um, plus group and they were getting explants and I didn't know about it. And I start, I, I decided this is it. I had the download. I knew this was my issue, right? I wanted to just shout from the rooftops. And so when I put that post together on Facebook, mm -hmm. I thought, I'm going to put a graphic together and I want to get as much many eyeballs on this because you know what? I'm not going to be quiet about this. I will not. <laughs> Wendy's be... never been quiet. I've known her for a long time. It, it, it can be a problem, can it? So I was like, I'm not. In fact, maybe that's why God gave me this big mouth, right? Is because now I can be this tool, right? This instrument to, to be able to be a voice and, and help others put the pieces together because we don't want one more woman suffering one more day. And I put this and I, I decided, oh my gosh, killer boobies. That's, and really that's what it was doing. Yeah. I believed, in fact, you'll hear my story, but in a nutshell, I was on my knees pleading saying, there's something that the doctors can't figure out. It, there's something inside of me, either A, I am dying mm -hmm. and I just need to surrender and know that my time is now gone. Mm -hmm. Or I have something inside of me. I even said those words. I have something inside of me, cancer, tumor, something, something that people mm -hmm. cannot find because I was doing the same thing. I was eating healthy. Yeah. I was moving my body as much as I could. I was doing my part to regain my health. All of the things the doctor said 
if you'll do this, you'll have good health. And I wasn't one of those people that was going to say, okay, I'm going to live the rest of my life sick. Right. This is just the way it is. My body genetically is not feeling good. I, I wouldn't accept that as my mm -hmm. terms. I, if I'm going to show up in this world, I'm going to show up at my highest and best. And so I put that post out. I couldn't believe the amount of feedback I had, how many people messaged me in t and they said, I'm in tears right now as I'm typing this because every symptom that you said was something that I am experiencing. I've been trying to figure it out and I have breast implants. And I said, no more, we're not doing this anymore. There is not one more woman, at least she'll have the knowledge. Yeah. Whether or not she wants to do something with it, mm -hmm. that's up to her. Right. Right? Well, it's because when you saw your friends' names and they said that they had explanted and they never shared that information mm -hmm. with you, it's almost like you feel a little bit betrayed. Yeah. And for me, like how come like, women aren't talking about Why this? are we not talking yeah, about right. this? Because we're embarrassed that why we, we, that we did this to ourselves? Yeah. Are we ashamed that we didn't think our body was enough? Like, why are we not talking about it? Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we are talking about it now. We're working on a documentary. It's killer boobies. Mm -hmm. And we want to share my experience. So I'm actually going in next week yes. for my consultation with your doctor. Yes. He's so wonderful. He's such an advocate for women. And one of the things that really resonated with me, because as you go through this journey, you're going to find out that there are doctors that don't really believe there's enough research. Mm -hmm. They don't really believe that this is something that's really happening. And you're going to find that with a lot of plastic surgeons, surgeons and a lot of doctors. Yeah. Um, but our, the doctor that you're going to, and we're going to have him on the podcast, by the way, his name is Dr. Self. And he has been compiling research. And when I explained my symptoms, when I was there, he said, I, first of all, I want you to understand that everything you feel is real. You're not making this up. You're not crazy. And You're not I, a hypochondriac. I started to cry because I can't even tell you, you, yeah. you relate. Yeah. Your family you starts to in. think you're so hypochondriacs, good. right? Mm -hmm. Like they think there's no way you can have that many symptoms. There's no way that you can feel sick every single day, right? right? Like right. there's something wrong with you. And he said, first of all, I want to just help you understand that what you're feeling is real. Second of all, my data and my research shows that the women that come in sick and speak to me, once mm -hmm. I get the explant done and if I do it properly, which you're going to learn through this podcast and those resources we just shared with you, how to do it correctly, right? 95% of them claim their health back, like regain their health. 95%. This is, these incredible. are actual patients that your doctor yeah. is tracking yeah. to find out if they're actually feeling better afterwards. Yeah. And that's a pretty remarkable statistic. Well, mm -hmm. especially when, you know, a thousand women roughly a day are, are going in and getting implants. And, and yeah. in Can this, you say that again? How many women a day are going in and getting implants? <laughs> and this is U.S., by the way. Right. Just in the United States. And this is a global. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't imagine the numbers that way. Roughly a thousand women every single day are going under the knife to get implants. And I, I would bet you that over half or more would not mm -hmm. do it if they knew what could happen. Because once you go through this, now I have to pay to get them removed. It's painful. It's going to cost me a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But I want my skin risk. back. I've got okay. weird, weird cysts on my face. I've got lumpy skin. I've got dry eyes. Just all these little things that I've been wondering, like, why did this happen? Mm -hmm. I get out of breath. I can't take a deep breath. Like there's just all these little mm -hmm. things. And, and for me, it's like, I'm in, I'm in some mom groups. I'm a single mom, three kids. And I'm in these mom groups and people will post, God, I've been so sick. I don't know what's going on. And I feel an obligation to educate and inform as many women mm -hmm. as I can. Mm -hmm. Like I shared your story mm -hmm. on my page and I said, anybody who has implants, if you have unexplained illness, you need to look this up. Any of these women who complain, I'm like, do you have mm -hmm. breast implants? Because again, I consider myself very knowledgeable. I'm always reading and, and I want to know what's going on. I had no clue this was a thing until she said it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you listening to this, most likely, this is what I get every time I go to lunch, every time I'm on a phone call with a friend and we start talking about this, mm -hmm. they say, oh my gosh, I have a sister-in-law that has these mystery symptoms and she doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. Oh my gosh, can she call you? And, and she has breast implants. And so those of you that are listening, we will need to link arms, right? We need to link <laughs> arms. We need to be able to spread this message wide and far. So if you're listening to it and you're going, oh my gosh, I, I have 10 people that I know that are suffering with this. You can be a part of this. 
right. you can be subscribing, you can be reviewing, you can be sharing, you can, you can help them find this resource. Because genuinely the title killer, a lot of people ha have said, my mom died from this. Like they genuinely mm -hmm. think that they or somebody they love ha has died from it women who are experiencing it, experiencing it, you both felt like you were dying and we it was unexplained. Definitely. My symptoms like we aren't, aren't quite that strong, but there's enough of it for me to go, I want to be around for my kids. I'm, right. I, I'm their provider. And my implants are the textured ones that were recalled. And by the way, I never got a letter in the mail. I never mm -hmm. got an email. I never found anything. I saw her post and I started researching and I discovered, oh, I have the, the textured mm -hmm. implants that were recalled. I called the doctor. And they told me, oh, it's just dumb. It's this regulatory thing. You're fine. Come in. We'll replace them. Get the gummy bear implants. Um, you know, <laughs> some women might get, like, there's such a minor, 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 minor idea of cancer with them, but you don't have anything to worry about. And I'm like, okay. Um, but I actually, do have children, and maybe I am not eager to go down the road of cancer. But Thank it's, you very much. But it's know, been 10 years, and it's like, and you wonder, like, okay, what's genetic? My mom has fibromyalgia. I felt symptoms and I just thought, oh, that must be genetic until I heard this. And I'm like, now I don't know. Yeah. Is it genetic or is it from these toxins in my body, the poison that's poisoning me? I know when I wake up and my eyes hurt so bad, I can't open them and they're just burning and burning. And I'm thinking, why is this happening? Right. 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 You know, I just even think about me here right now, the weekend I just had six months ago, I could barely get a mail in the mail, uh, a, a letter in the mailbox. And that was my only to do for you the mean, entire day. I mean, it was so hard. For it was to get so out of the house, hard to do out anything. And get, and get your mail. I can was enough. Yeah. I can remember yeah. having to file my quarterly taxes. And all I had to do that day was get a letter in the mailbox. And that was excruciating. <laughs> okay. I'm just yeah. telling you that. And here I am my weekend. I drove four hours. I stayed uh, with some business partners overnight in a cabin. We did a whole planning retreat yesterday. I drove another few hours. I made it here. Yeah. I've been planning all day. We're now producing this. I'm going to go drive home tonight, four hours. And you never could have done that. No. You guys, I, I can't even tell you it gets me emotional. It truly gets me emotional. I, I have been given a second chance in life and I am not going to take that lightly. I'm not. And we I want to pass that on to someone. Else. I think that's why we're all mm -hmm. so passionate mm -hmm. because you guys know it firsthand, but the, the, the truth of the matter is I guarantee all of you either know someone, mm -hmm. love someone, or you have them yourself with implants and you might not know they have them. My kids didn't know I had them. Mm -hmm. Most people have no clue that I had them because it's not something you broadcast. <laughs> you know, you don't go, hey, everybody, I got a boob job. <laughs> I, was, I was insecure, but look at me now. You know? oh, except for the gal that I worked with. <laughs> she, had to show, she had to show everybody them. No, I'm not one of I'm those. Not I'm not going to show sure. everybody my boobs. But I remember her going, look how pretty they are. You want to come see them? So, yeah, yeah, but but now we're at a point. <laughs> well, I mean, I know lots of women that are very proud of them. And but the thing about it is everybody liked I never truthfully, I never liked the way I looked because I felt like it made me chubby. Mm -hmm. You know, camera adds 10 pounds. And when I was a reporter, everybody would always tell me, Oh, you're much skinnier in real life because you looked bigger. Mm -hmm. And when I got these, I felt like I just looked very chunky and chubby and I felt thick. And so mm -hmm. I was kind of like self conscious and wanted mm -hmm. to cover up. Yeah. I'm not one of the other women like that, but you get to the point where it's like, oh, well, you, you love the way you look, you love the way you feel, but then when you start being, when you're so sick, you'll right. do anything for health and all of a sudden yes. you don't care what you look like because you're just I happy to be alive. I care. In fact, when I started got the data and the research and the download, the first thing was, what is my husband going to think about this? I mean, come on, you guys, let's be real. Okay. Mm -hmm. I... I got these to feel sexy in the bedroom. Okay. <laughs> and they were fun. They, they, I enjoyed them. Okay. I'm not, I'm just putting it out there. I never were. And I had, I had nerve damage and it hurt oh, and it was painful see? from day one. Yeah. So I, I, you got yeah. robbed. I got robbed. Yeah. So, yeah. so the first thing that came to my mind was what is my husband going to think about this? Right? Like I'm okay. I'm on board. I'm ready to do this. What is my husband going to be thinking about this? And so he took a lot of time looking at before and afters. And, um, but 
by the time he did all the research, he was the one saying, so when are you going to do this? When yeah. are you going to do this? Especially because, when he saw what it was going to do to your health. Exactly. And, and that, that was a real thing. It wasn't yeah. something yeah. that you had created right. in your mind. Right. And yeah. honestly, I'm going to tell you, I did not care what I look like. If I could regain my health and have normal functioning again, mm -hmm. did not matter what I did. I didn't care if I didn't even so have true. breasts anymore. But no, I, but I think it's kind of scary to you not to interrupt you. Yeah, no, you're fine. You guys are both married, happy marriages, great mm -hmm. husbands. Mm -hmm. I'm single. And, you know, these were, I got these for confidence. And so mm -hmm. there's part of me that wonders, like, am I going to be deformed when mm -hmm. this happens? Right. What am I going to look like? Right. Like, I, you know, go out with somebody now and, and do I tell them, oh, you know, because he's like, oh, you have such a great body, which I don't date people for that reason. But I'm just saying, mm -hmm. right. I said, well, these are going away and, mm -hmm. you know, I hope you are into me for me right. and not because yeah. of the way right. I look. But it is scary, too, to go should I or shouldn't I? Yeah. Right. This can be complicated yeah. on many layers. And we yeah. hope that in this podcast, we can unravel a lot of those layers. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of those layers. We're going to bring up a lot of topics that matter to all of you. Mm -hmm. Things that just like, just like that, like that whole insecurity, all of it. Well, yeah, it, it's hard it. because you do have husbands and, and you wonder what they're going to think or how they're going to feel. Those of us that are, that are single, I mean, it's just such a personal thing it that is. we're having to talk it publicly is. about yeah. because it's literally a matter of life or, or death. It really is. And I have to tell you, I love them small. I love <laughs> them. I gotta, I'm gotta. So like, i like, I love the way I look in shirts more <laughs> now. I really do. And I think they're beautiful. So yeah. just throwing it out there to anybody who's wondering, will you like them afterwards? Right. I yeah, really even when them. you liked them so much. Yeah, because I admit I loved them before. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah. I feel the same way. And I think, I think just the fact that I'm, my body is so healthy. I love my whole body. Whereas before I felt like I was constantly at war with my body. Mm. Well, you were. And I was, yes. And so it's so nice to be at peace with my body. And that includes peace with my chest. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very happy. Yeah. I want to be authentic. I want to be real. I want mm -hmm. toxins and poisons out of my body. And mm -hmm. I'm actually looking forward to getting shirts that fit because <laughs> a lot of times I, can I can't it. button my shirts. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm a, a 36 double D, which I didn't go crazy. I mean, there's yeah. women that go way bigger and I was about a 36 B mm -hmm. to begin with. So I went up two cup sizes, mm -hmm. but I'm actually really kind of looking forward to it. I'm just scared though, because you wonder you know, it's like when somebody loses a lot of weight, is there going to be loose skin? Is it, it's kind of like blowing a big balloon up and then letting it out I and know. you go, is that what I'm right. going to have left? That's what I'm scared about. <laughs> and that's a terrible thing. It and it's no, it's no. Like that no. Way. no. 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 <laughs> so, so I really instilled confidence. actually doesn't necessarily. It doesn't. Happen. And I was so grateful. My mother-in-law, she's on a roll. I'm sorry, not my mother-in-law, my stepmom. Uh, she's only about what 15 or something years older than me but she um had her explant done and she removed them she does not have a lift and I she was have telling me how pleasantly surprised at yes. how her body bounced right back yeah. and mm -hmm. how um, they're beautiful she had flesh yeah. there she she had enough breast or boob to be happy with it and it, your body knows what to do. Your skin knows what to do. It'll yes. pull back into place. And yeah, it won't be the balloon. Again, it won't be the balloon. Okay, <laughs> topics it won't. that we'll get into. But let's yeah. just let everybody know what our intention yeah, is. Yeah, what is our podcast, intention? And what do we hope to cover? Um, when do you like the stories? I like the stories. I feel, I, I hear stories every single day of people who call me asking me about breast implant illness and sharing their story, sharing stories of the fact that they lost, some of them lost everything. They've lost relationships. They've lost their jobs. They couldn't work any longer. Mm -hmm. They lost financially. They were ruined because they had gone through so many different protocols and doctors and procedures. And like me, I ended up having a couple of surgeries because like appendicitis and things like yeah. that, um, that they, in, they invested so much money into their health that they, they lost everything. Right. And so I like the stories. I want to know how this impacted them, but then more importantly, how did they regain it all? I like the rags to riches, right? I like mm -hmm. to be able to see the underdog become the, the, you know, the, the victim become the victor basically. Right. And so that to me is important. So we are going to have stories. We're going to have stories of people that you know, and I know in the news 
that are going to be on here that are going to share their stories. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are people that we all can relate mm -hmm. to and, um, and, and from from all regular people, of life. Yeah. yeah, regular mm -hmm. people, right. not just celebrities, mm -hmm. but also regular people, people that are in their seventies, people who, I mean, you just shared a story earlier today about yeah. an 18 year old that got it for her high school graduation, right? Or 18th birthday. One of them. Yeah. And, and I don't know if she survived. She was on her deathbed and they were unsure if they were going to and, and, you know, having a daughter that's turning 18, I guess for me, when you talk about intentions with mm -hmm. this program and why are we doing it? Mm -hmm. Not because it's comfortable. I can tell you that much. <laughs> not because I have a yeah, ton of free right. time. I can tell you that much. <laughs> it's because at this point in my life, 42 years old, I want to do things that matter. I want to do things that are impactful, that are meaningful and that help other people. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to go through what any of us have gone through. And so if by sharing my story and taking you through mm -hmm. this process and this journey with, with us, mm -hmm on, you know, where do you even start? I, when all this happened, I, I, I got contacted Wendy and I said, who do I, who do mm -hmm. I even call? General doctor, OBGYN. I called my OBGYN. I was like, um, I, is this who I call? What do I even right. say? Yeah. I didn't know what to do. Then I call my regular doctor. Then I, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So kind of helping you navigate the process of, Hey, this is me. Where do I start? What does it look like? Where's the fear? because mm -hmm. I'm going to be explanting this year yeah. and I'm going to allow you guys to follow my journey and to come in and, and hear what I'm going through, the good, the bad, mm -hmm. and, the, and the indifferent, and just kind of see what the process is. Because yeah. at the end of the day, if we can help save lives, that's what we want to do. And even though I joke around, slightly joking, right? There's always some truth into the joke. Mm -hmm. I am concerned about how I'm going to look, yeah. but, also, but also yeah. at the end of the day, I'm so content with who I am. Yeah. I feel like the most real I've ever felt, mm -hmm. the most authentic. And so I want to have that. And I don't care what I look like, like because I want to be healthy. I want to be there exactly. for my kids. Yeah. And yeah. I know that somebody out there is going to love me for me and not right. because I have big boobies. Right. And right. healthy is yeah. the most beautiful. Healthy. When your yeah. eyes Confident. are clear and your skin's clear and you're yeah. happy and you're smiling and you're at your highest mm -hmm. and best you're and you're confident, that is beautiful. Right. That's beautiful. Yeah. And and so we I all want to enjoy Yeah, exactly. Life. So mm -hmm. so we're we're talking stories, we're talking helping the person who's trying to put the pieces together mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. understand what the symptoms are, yeah. how this why this might be happening to them, right? right. And then right where do we begin? Right. But then we also have our little research. Oh, I'm here. crazy about research. I love research. I will hopefully take all the questions that you have and research them and bring you answers. So we're going to dive into what is breast plant illness and try to unravel it and help you understand um, what it is about the implants that are causing you to get sick and how it is that you can detox. So that Both you saline and silicone. Get, yeah. Yes. All, yeah, in, not all just implants. Yeah, all I mean, implants. Some people say, oh, saline are fine. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. it's just the mm -hmm. fact that it doesn't have to be ruptured to be making you sick. Just in your body is making you sick and why, but how do you recover from that? And the detox. And mm -hmm. we'll find out what's happening as, as, um, as a movement, you know, who's mm -hmm. showing up at Congress and what kind of things are happening there so that we can let more people know about it. And what about this warning label that's being put on the boxes? So I hope to be helping bring to the table a lot of research and sharing that with you so you can all know what's happening and spread the word and keep mm -hmm. even the other women in the loop so that they know what's going yeah. on. Yeah, and we'll even have doctors on here mm -hmm. that will help to um, help us understand with their research, their data, yeah. their, their um, medical background, yep. their expertise in the body, right? And yep. so I love that we have this dichotomy here, you mm -hmm. know, of, of, you know, my background as a speaker, a podcaster, uh, someone who's constantly trying to help with the greater good of man mm -hmm. through my voice, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then we've yeah. got your researcher, certified health coach, mm -hmm. we have a broadcaster uh, that is going to help us see what it is to go through this process and again because this matters right mm -hmm. right and and i think that we want we want to hear your story too we want to see how it's impacted you yeah. what you're doing we want to continue to learn and mm -hmm. grow and and build a community of like-minded people so yeah. we hope that you will get involved in the conversation through mm -hmm. our social media and if you have questions for us or comments they can go mm -hmm. to killerboobies at mm -hmm. gmail right. because yeah. we we want this to be interactive 
Yeah. And if there are people you want us to interview you, interview online so that they can get their voice out, mm -hmm. please let us know who to connect with because we want these stories shared. Absolutely. Everybody needs to hear these stories. Absolutely. So I think that we have wrapped things up for the first episode. You have an idea of who we are. You have an idea of what our intention is, what you can learn, get involved. That's all I can say. Link arms with us. Let's, let's use this movement to help those individuals that need to hear this, that need to have this information brought to their intention so that they can reclaim their health, so that they can reclaim their role in life yeah. that they can be better moms they can be better you know wives they can be better business women they can be better you know just at living life that's what we want to do we want to give them a second chance just like leslie and i have found that we have mm -hmm. brandy's on that track right now mm -hmm. and so i'm incredibly grateful and honored to be in this seat right now sharing this information with you we want to hear your story we want to hear your voice so again share sure. Share, share, share. Your one share and your circle of influence could literally save somebody's lives. So you know what? Share it. Don't be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Share the podcast. Share the information. Get the word out there. Mm -hmm. Every day, a yeah, thousand right. women in the United States are getting implants. Yeah. If yep. you have the ability to affect one of them from doing it, you could be a lifesaver. Yep. So yeah, share can we it. just direct everyone right now to go visit Nicole Deruda. Yes. Because yes. we want you to listen to this. And now we want you to get on your computer and look up this Facebook. Go ahead and say it. Healingbreastimplantillness.com. Or you can go to on Facebook and mm -hmm. it is um, Breast Implant Healing and Illness, right? By Nicole. By Nicole. Yeah. Um, so I, start I, the Google. You'll actually, find if you go on healing in breast implant illness.com, she has a, a, a link to her Facebook yeah. page. So, yeah. and but, the reason we want you to go there is because this it was such a powerful game changer for Wendy and I when and we me. went there and it's been a great resource for Brandy as she's been looking into this and doing some research to figure out what she needs to do. It will help a lot of women. It's easy to share. And we want you to share that. And, um, anytime you can help support Nicole's mission, do it. She doesn't ask for money. We're trying to get mm -hmm. this out. If you can subscribe to our channel, mm -hmm. we would really appreciate it because we need more people listening and mm -hmm. we will send you so much information. You'll be tickled pink. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, I just want to put one more plug for Nicole because Nicole, literally, I feel like she is one of the people who saved my life. I mean, honestly, <laughs> ah, I'm getting a little emotional. And it's one of those things where when you, when you look at what she's done and the fact that she's such a pioneer in, in this movement, I want to support her and it she's never done it for money she's never done it for financial abundance right and yet it just costs money to have a website to maintain a website to make sure that that doctor list is maintained take the time to look at all the people yeah yeah, getting yeah. all the, the messages make sure the content is yeah yeah okay. and my thought is if she's impacted in your if she's impacted your life and your journey or someone you love donate five bucks donate ten dollars mm -hmm. like go out and do our part to support what she's doing because she's impacted so many lives. Yeah. I, I just can't even stress that enough. So with that being said, I am excited to take this journey with you. I hope that you'll subscribe and you'll continue to watch us and listen to us yeah. and help share this. We're going to be on YouTube. We'll, we're, we're on, um, you know, iTunes. Um, we're on Look Spotify. On we're on media. everything. Yeah. I mean, just killer boobies. You'll find us Hashtag. everywhere. Yeah. Search it. But every week you again expect new content. So we hope that you'll join us again. Yes. And with that being said, thank you for sharing this time with us. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for listening to Killer Boobies Podcast. If you found value in today's episode, we encourage you to join the movement and review, subscribe, and share this episode. By doing so, you could ultimately save a woman's life and help her to reclaim her health once again.